name of Jesus. I thank you for your love. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your kindness. Spirit of the living God, I thank you, Father, for what you are about to do. You're about to do something great, something so awesome, something so phenomenal. So I thank you, Father God, that you alone are God. You are God of every situation. You are God of every circumstance. In the mighty name of Jesus, I bless you. In Jesus' mighty name, I bless you. There is no one like Jesus. Well, we've had a wonderful service um, this Easter. It's been awesome. We spoke of um, the cross, the gospel before the cross, and the gospel after the cross. We say the message uh, of God is, is twofold. It's the gospel of God. That's what Paul said. You know, I love Paul. If you read uh, Galatians 3, it says God preached the gospel to Abraham. What is a preacher? He preached the gospel. You see, the key is the gospel to understand the message. You know, we'll talk about the gospel uh, sometime later, maybe during the year or when the spirit of the Lord leads us. But today, I just want us to go again before the cross right you know just to tie up some loose ends you know because we've been on we've been fast in glory to god it's been like the flash <laughs> formula one driver lewis hamilton right so we've been really all over the bible you know for the purpose of easter but now it's time for us to relax you know we, we cannot always be preached to you know uh good friday and resurrection sunday there are no services to teach there are services to preach there's a difference between preaching and and teaching you know, sometimes we lack preaching. Many of God's children have been preached to, yet they've not been taught. You know, I, I love to do both as the spirit of the Lord leads me and directs me, you know. To teach is they're being impacted with spiritual truths. Some of these truths might not, uh, you might not recognize them now, but years later, you'll be saying, wow, this is what I learned. Sometimes it becomes yours. You don't even know where you got it from. There are some revelations that I get you know, there are some revelations that I get. I ask myself, where did this come from? Sometimes years, years ago when I sat down and listened to somebody teach. So you, you should always seek for teachers. Glory to God. Not prophets, teachers. You know, wherever there were prophets, there were also teachers, right? A prophet without a teacher, very, very dangerous. <laughs> Glory to God. You might end up being in deception. That's why in OTCC we like to, to teach. Now, let's turn our Bibles to Luke 23, verse 34. Today, our topic is we are still on prayer. We want to look at forgiveness. Glory to God. We want to talk about forgiveness today, which is very, very powerful. So we are going to, to, to study this. We are going to look at it. Glory to God. Luke 23, verse 34. Right. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they, divide, they divided up his clothes by casting lots. Right. right. <laughs> See, I, I started it in verse 34, right? I started it in verse 34. But I want you to look at uh, verse 32. Two other men, both criminals, were also laid out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the skull, there they crucified him along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them. You know, the nails were, were going in and he's saying, Father, forgive them. He's praying for forgiveness and he's asking God to forgive them. What I said, the question that I asked, what will you have prayed? Nails are going, right? They are going in. Right? It's, it's difficult. It's painful. Remember, they beaten Jesus up. They put a crown of thorns on his head, right? And they would whip him for a crime that he did not do. Now, what he says here, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. What touched me here is this. They do not know what they are doing, right? For they know not what they are doing. See? Could it be, that's the reason why many struggle with forgiving people, because you think people know what they are doing, right? Or in my language, in the Vele, say, by sense, right? <laughs> they know what they are doing, right? Jesus here is saying they do not know what they are doing, right? See, th this was the most difficult time of, of, of Jesus. Is when you come and they are shouting, Hosanna is good, but when they are crucifying you, to cry out, Father, forgive them. See, for they know not what they are doing, right? Let's turn our Bibles again to Mark 11. 
verse 25. Who we'll tie all these scriptures together? Mark 11, verse 25. Mark 11, verse 25, right? Mark 11, 25. <laughs> right. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything, I want you to take note. If you hold anything, right? If you hold anything against anyone, <laughs> see, when you stand, pray. If you hold anything against anyone, forgive him. Forgive him. Now, this is not from Pastor Lowe. No, this is not from a prophet somewhere in Nigeria or in South Africa. No. And this is not from a mega preacher. This is from Jesus. Glory to God. When you stand praying, so at the cross, he is demonstrating. Remember that word that I said about intercession, demonstrating the Christian life. He started demonstrating, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. Now, he's demonstrating what he already taught them. When you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive you, so that your father in heaven may forgive. You, your sins. Verse 26, which is only in the um, NIV version. But if you do not forgive, neither will your father who is in heaven forgive your sins. What is Jesus really talking about here in Mark 11, uh, 25? It says, when you stand, pray, forgive. Right? We know. Mark 11 22. We caught Mark 11, 22. We love Mark 11, 22, right? Have faith in God. Jesus answered, like, have faith in God. Now, if we cross over to 23, I tell you the truth. If anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will happen, it will be done for him. Verse 24. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours, right? Many people stop here. They preach it, they, they preach faith and they stop at verse 24. Whatever you desire, when you pray, believe that you have received it. The problem is you have not believed. If you have believed you have received, it is yours, it will manifest. Shout somebody, and then we start shouting, right? Mm. Who, whosoever shall say to this mountain, if you speak the problem, you are not speaking to the mountain. You are telling God about your mountain. You know, we have spoken this revelation, right? But Jesus did not stop there. He mm -mm. says, and it's a conjunction, right? So it ties up everything. And verse 25, when you stand pray, see, the having faith on God part. Is the very most important thing on earth. They have faith in God. Who is God? And where is faith? Is faith here in the mind of the heart? Where is faith? That's the question. And I'm asking you, glory to God, and I'll give you the answer. See, faith is not a head knowledge. Faith is a revelation knowledge. It's in the heart, right? Romans 10, it says, the word of faith is not in heaven. The word of faith is not in the abyss, the realm of the dead. The word of faith is in our heart. Glory to God. So faith is in the heart. Faith is, Romans 12, verse 3. It says, God has given us the measure of faith. He has given us the measure of faith. Now, I like to think of faith as a muscle. Some grow that muscle called faith, right? Some, they grow it. They exercise it. Some don't. So they become weak, right? So each and every believer, any person that said yes to Jesus Christ, they have faith, right? The faith has been given to them, right? But in Mark 11, 22, when he says he have faith in God, it's a different type of faith that um, Jesus is talking about here. It's not the faith that we have. No, 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 no. Like that we have in our hearts. No. It's a relational faith. Glory to God. It is that faith of putting my trust you know, leaning on God. As I said, every believer has faith, but it's a master that grows. Here, when Jesus says, have faith in God, right? It is that type of faith that who of 
knowing who God is, right? Knowing who God is, right? Have faith in God. Who is God? Remember, he had cursed the feet. He had spoken to the feet, right? Let no man eat from thee, from henceforth. And he had cursed the feet from the roots upwards. He cursed it, right? And the feet was cursed. They witnessed what Jesus has said. So when he says, have faith in God, what Jesus is saying, listen, God is able to do anything, right? But can you believe that he can really do it? Do you have faith in his ability or you have faith in your own ability, right? So when he says have faith in God, have faith in God, putting your trust in God, that God is well able, right? If you can say to this mountain, the mountain will be moved because you see, you are coming from a place that you are fixed on God, right? Now, if you stand praying, if you believe you have received, you shall have what you have believed. If you stand praying, and when you are praying, this is where we are going to get. When you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, this is the key that Jesus is talking about. He says, listen, God is able, but you need to understand there is an enemy that is at work behind the scenes. What the devil does is cause offense. See, what most people are struggling with right now is an offended heart. See, what offense does, it stops the faith from manifesting. It stops God from acting. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, the devil understands that God is able. But what he tries to do is to stop you from seeing what God is able to do. So he's going to cause you to be offended. He's going to attack your heart with offense. So people will come to offend you. So if there is no forgive, if you have not made that decision to forgive, it is not God who is stopping the answer coming. It is the enemy that now has access to your heart, right? Let's go to verse 24. I want to explain something. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe, that is the way. Whatever you ask for in prayer, believe. Now, most Bible scholars or preachers or pastors, they use faith and believing is the same way, right? It is not the same way. Believing is the action behind your faith. Faith is, but faith is, how, how can I explain this, right? See, believing is acting out that faith that is inside of you, right? Says so if we have faith and without works, our faith is dead. That is uh, James 2, right? If we have faith without works, our faith is dead. See, faith is to, to act out. See, for example, somebody who believes God for healing, right? You are believing God for a healing, right? You've been maybe having problem with your, your knee. Your believing is you're going to step out. You're going to start exercising. You're going to start doing squats. You're going to start doing exercise. That is your believing. That is believing. That is your action behind your faith. That is the verb. That is the doing of your faith. Now, you might have faith, you sit down, I believe I'm healed, right? You, you, you sit down, you have faith right? that God can heal you. You have faith that ah, God is a healer. Is able. That's where many people are. They, they have faith that God can do it, everything, but they are not believing. So they are not acting out their faith. So believing is the verb behind faith. It is the, it is the action part of faith, right? That now I have faith, I have to act out like that woman with an issue of blood, right? That we talked about, right? When she heard about Jesus, what did she do? She did not stay at home and say, ah, I'll be healed, I'll be healed. She acted out, that was belief. She believed in what she heard. She believed in the faith, right? And then she acted out, that is believing, right? That's why you see here in Mark 11, 22 and 24, it says, therefore I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe right? Believe. So the problem that many people have is a problem of believing, right? And how and why do they have a problem of believing? Verse 25, this is the major issue that Jesus uh, addresses here. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive him, right? Because if there is in your heart here unforgiveness, you can't act out faith. You cannot believe. You see, believing and unforgiveness in the same heart, it becomes hard to function. 
You can try to convince yourself that you believe. How? Glory to God. It is hard to act out. Remember, believing, you are believing that weight that is already in your heart. So you have to act it out. So how can you then act it out if there is unforgiveness? Because what unforgiveness does, it destroys that believing part on your part. Then there is no manifestation of healing. There is no manifestation of what you are believing God for. Now let's go deeper. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, anything against anyone, forgive him. Right? Let's mix it together. Right? Let's go to Luke 17. We will connect. I will explain. If you have any questions, please do send them to me on WhatsApp. I thrive on questions. I love questions. Glory to God. Now, X, uh, Luke 17 from this one. Jesus said to his disciples, things that cause people to be offended are bound to come. But woe to that person through whom they come. It would be better for him to be thrown into the sea with a millstone tied around his neck than for him to cause one of these little ones to offend or to sin. So watch yourself. Now, verse, verse three. So watch yourself. If your brother sins, rebuke him. And if he, repent, he repents, forgive him. If he sins against you seven times in a day and seven times come back to you and says, I repent, listen to what Jesus says, forgive him. Forgive him. Now, verse five, I, I, I want to connect it with Mark 11. The apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. You see, increase our faith. So the antidote against unforgiveness the disciples understood it. Increase our faith. Increase our faith. Because if we are to overcome unforgiveness, we need more faith. That's what they are saying. Right? Increase <laughs> our faith. So if I have to forgive this person seven times a day, why, why is Jesus saying this? You have to forgive them. Because the, the enemy has access to our hearts. He stops our faith from functioning through unforgiveness. There are countless times people are praying for healing, they are praying for promotion at work. You see, they are still bitter, they were offended. Guard your heart against offense, right? Because what the enemy wants to do is to move us into the place of unforgiveness. He understands that he cannot stop faith. Listen, whatsoever is born of God, first John 5 4 overcomes the world. The devil is afraid of faith. The devil cannot fathom faith. He cannot understand faith. So the best thing that he can do is to attack you. So he is going to use every person on earth to attack you, to get you offended, to get you in that place of unforgiveness. So when you are in that place of unforgiveness, your faith cannot function. It cannot work. <sighs> Galatians 5 verse 6. Let's go there. Galatians 5, 6. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Galatians 5, 6. Galatians 5, 6. Galatians 5, 6. Right? Galatians 5, 6. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. The only thing that counts is faith. Right? He doesn't stop there. It says in Christ Jesus, the works of the law has no value. That is circumcision and all the other stuff. It says all that thing is useless, right? The only thing that, that has value or the only thing that counts, listen to what he says, is faith expressing itself through love. Expressing itself through love. That is the believing part I was talking about. He said faith working through love. So if we are in unforgiveness, are we working or operating in love? Absolutely not. So if there is no love, which is the engine behind faith, which is the engine that causes us to manifest the promises of God, if that love is not there, the faith is not working. The faith cannot work anymore. It cannot operate anymore. So if I'm the devil, what do I do? Let's nail him to the cross. So when Jesus is praying, Father, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. He understands that if there has to be a resurrection to see the manifestation of faith in his life, he needs to forgive them. Remember what, what was he saying? He was speaking faith, right? Before he went to the cross. 
He was saying it before he went to the cross. Let's go to John 14, verse 6. Let's find out what he was saying. John 14, 6, right? I want to show you. John 14, 6. <laughs> Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. Right? He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Right? Let's go to John 11, verse 24. Glory to God. What Jesus was saying there, it was his faith. Now he is at the cross being crucified. He was saying it. He was declaring it, right? John 11, 24. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Verse 25. Jesus said to him, Jesus said to him, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Now, he was saying he's the resurrection and the life. Now, the devil at the cross is trying, trying to stop that resurrection. He wants Jesus to be offended. Glory to God. So, because if Jesus is offended, there will be no resurrection. Now, when he says, when you stand praying, forgive, there is no manifestation when there is no forgiveness. Glory to God. So when we walk in unforgiveness, there cannot be any manifestation. The faith will not work because there is no love there. Well, we're talking about Jesus being crucified. We need to learn, you know, in our bed cell, just to sit on your own. Has your heart been offended? You know, you want to sit down with your, your bed self or your good self, right? Find out where you have been offended. Because the enemy uses offense to stop the manifestation, the resurrection. So you don't realize yet you'll be offended. The husband offended by the wife, the wife offended by the husband, <laughs> the ex-husband offended by the ex-wife. Now you are no longer moving. Because unforgiveness is like gangrene, it spreads. You know, that root of unforgiveness, it will grow, it will stop you, it will hinder you. When God is about to do something in your life, the enemy will move in with offense. Watch the times when you were offended. There was something around the court. So the enemy studied you and recognized and realized that if I move in here, <laughs> she will move out of that place. She will become bitter, right? That's what the enemy does because he wants to stop the manifestation. The devil understands that as Christians, we are the most powerful creatures. We have been raised with Christ Jesus. We are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. But what does he do? Unforgiveness. Don't hold grudges. Glory to God. And when you stand, pray. Forgive. Right? Forgive. Let's continue. Now, in uh, Luke 17, he replied, right? remember in 5, Luke 17, 5, the apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. Verse 6, he replied, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this sycamine tree, be uprooted and planted in the seed, and it will obey you. If you have faith as, a, as small as a mustard seed, see, what is he saying? What is he saying? If you have a revelation of who God is, that's where I wanted to go. That Mark 11, 22 is a revelation of who God is. If you have a revelation of who God is, you will not be offended. Glory to God. A revelation of God, it takes you out of offense. Right? So when Jesus says, forgive them for they know not what they are doing, he knew who God is. It says, they know not they were in darkness. The plan of the enemy is to get us into darkness. Unforgiveness is the work of darkness. So if I can get them out of, out of light, get them into darkness, see, that's the only way that the enemy can hinder healing. That's the only way that the enemy can hinder marriages. That's the only way that the enemy can hinder promotion. Whatever you are praying for, whatever you've been praying for in your life, check, check your heart. Glory to God. The scripture says, we ought to judge ourselves. Learn to judge yourself. Right? There are some that say, ah, me, 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 I forgive. I, I, I forgive. Me, I forgive them. But in your heart, you really have it. Glory to God. See, forgiveness is a, you need to understand how the devil operates. He is a liar. He is a deceiver. So he understands the heart. Because a heart that has unforgiveness, that heart cannot grow. It cannot mature in the things of God. Right? Because faith cannot be made manifest in a heart that is holding on to unforgiveness. So you want to sit down. People that have hurt you, that have caused you pain, 
whether it's your parents, whether it's your spouse, whether it's your ex-husband, whether it's your work colleagues, you want to sit down and ask, Lord, is there bitterness in my heart towards them? Right? Is there bitterness in my heart towards them? That's why I like to pray in tongues. Because as you begin to pray in the spirit, the Holy Spirit will show you. That's why you ought to read the word of God. You see, when he says, have faith in God, remember, I'm taking you back. It's a revelation of who God is, right? Faith works by love. Have faith in God. God is love, right? God is love. Have faith in love, right? God is light. Have faith in light. God is life. Have faith in life. Love, light, and, and life, right? Love, light, and light. So if I have faith in life, what is unforgiveness? It's death. What is unforgiveness? Darkness. Forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. Glory to God. There are people that sometimes they are hating you. They don't know what they are doing. But when you start focusing on what people are doing, when you focus on them, remember, you are stopping your resurrection. You are stopping your faith. Matured. So I was asking myself, says, Lord, why is it that, what is the major reason why Christians do not forgive him? What, why is, what is the major reason why Christians do not forgive or hold grudges? Right? So I was looking at this. It says immaturity or lack of knowledge. It says immaturity. They have not come to the revelation of who God is. Right? They have not matured in their relationship with God. They, they, they genuinely love God. You know, people genuinely love God. They go to church. But you see, they have not matured enough. See, that's why Jesus says, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this sycamine tree, be uprooted. It says you can speak to the sycamine tree. The, the tree, most of your versions that you have, it, it speaks of a uh, mulberry tree. It's a wrong translation. The proper Greek rendering is Sycamine. There were two types of um, trees that produce um, figs in the Middle East. It was the maple tree. The maple tree that they put here in the NIV, it's a wrong translation. Maple produced good figs and the rich, they enjoyed those figs, right? It was for the rich, they were very expensive. The sycamine was for the poor, produced uh, uh, figs that were very, very sour. They were very bitter, right? They were very bitter. And the sycamine tree, what the sycamine tree did is it would it had its roots, it would go way, way underground. It will reach the reserve, the water reserve that are way, way underneath, and it will take its resources from underneath that even during summer, it will be producing figs, right? That's how big the sycamine tree. So when Jesus says, if you will say to this sycamine tree, you can say to the sycamine tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, it will obey you. He is not talking about trees. Jesus is not talking about trees. He's talking about bitterness. The sycamine tree produced bitter figs, right? Because unforgiveness, what happens? Unforgiveness, you become bitter. And when you become bitter, what do you do? You spread that bitterness all over wherever you go. In your family, you spread bitterness. In your church, you spread bitterness. And that bitterness grows. You see, in your, everywhere you go, then there is strife. You know, then your heart is a heart that is full of bitterness. That when God tries to talk to you, remember, God does not speak to us in our head, we throw our head. No, He speaks to us through our hearts. The sower goes to sow a seed. Now, the seed fails on different kinds of grounds. The ground is, is the heart, right? So if your heart is full of bitterness, you can't hear God. That's why it's hard to minister to people that are in bitterness. You don't understand what they have done to me. You don't understand what she has done to me. You don't understand what he has done to me. That heart is bitter, immaturity, no growth. You have not grown. Oh, Pastor, you see, ah, you're talking about Jesus. I hear what you are talking about. You know, yes, Jesus can say, forgive them. How about Joseph? As we round up, how about the story of Joseph? Glory to God. You see, Joseph was betrayed by his brothers, right? They threw him in a pit. Right, they beat him up, they put him in a bit. That's before the Holy Spirit. That's before we being born again. Right? The, the Holy Spirit was not inside of Joseph. He went into Potiphar's house, they lied on him, right? They lied about him. You know, Potiphar's house lied about Joseph, put him in a prison. He got into this prison for a crime that he did not commit. He stayed in prison maybe for 10 years. Who knows? We don't know how long he stayed in that prison for, right? Right. 
in the prison, he interpreted dreams. And he told those people that he interpreted their dreams, when you come out, <laughs> please don't forget me. I'm here for a crime that I did not do, right? That is what's right. Now, eventually he came out of prison. Now let's find out. Let's go to Genesis 45, this one. Find out from Joseph, why? What are the benefits of forgiving people? What are the benefits? You know, there are benefits. You know, when we don't know the benefits of something, we don't do it, right? There could have been no resurrection without Jesus forgiving those people that were nailing him to the cross. The benefits of forgiveness is, is promotion. Glory to God. It is promotion. Verse 40, uh, chapter 45 from verse 1. Then Joseph could no longer control himself before all his attendants, and he cried out, make everyone leave my presence. So there was no one with Joseph when he made himself known to his brothers. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard him and Pharaoh's household heard about it. And Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still living? But his brothers were not able to answer him because they were terrified at his presence. They were terrified. They thought Joseph was going to repay them for his evil. Now Joseph has been promoted. Joseph is the second in command. See, when we forgive people, that's when we begin to see the promotion. There are many, they are praying for promotion. We are seeking promotion, Lord. We are seeking this and that. Yet the heart is still bitter. See, what God was doing in Joseph's life was training him. It was a training, right? When he was in prison there, God was watching. Is he ready to come out yet? Is he ready for the next miracle in his life? Is he ready for the next blessing in his life? Is he ready for what I want to do with him in his life? Is he ready? So he stayed in prison because he was not yet ready. Maybe there are things that you are, you are standing, you are praying, you are believing God for. God is asking, how is your forgiveness towards people that have hurt you? How is your forgiveness towards the parents that were never there? How is your forgiveness towards the spouse that is not doing what is meant to be doing or that she is not doing what she is meant to be doing? How is your forgiveness towards your manager at work? They promoted everyone. They have skipped you. How is your forgiveness towards them? Yet you, you are looking. I work hard. I'm doing this. Their heart has become bitter. See, here, Joseph's heart was not bitter. Listen. Then Joseph said to his brother, they were terrified. Come close to me. See, when you forgive people, glory to God, when you have forgiven them, remember, I don't, mean, I don't have time, but I have to explain this because it's very important. Joseph had tested them. He had tested them. This is the revelation. Come close to me. He tested them. He told them to leave Benjamin. He put on a, a cup and he accused them of stuff. He wanted to find out if they have changed. Now, some, because of these teachings on forgiveness, they don't have a revelation of proper forgiveness, right? I mean, I forgive you. You bring people closer to you. They have not changed. You have not tested them. You have not tried them, right? They will hate you, okay? Even though you are second in command. That position, you end up losing it. Because you have not tested and tried them. See, when we are talking about forgiveness, look at Joseph's life. Look how he tried and tested his brothers. Forgiveness is something that is in our heart. But what's this? Don't get reconciled. Don't get reconciled with the people that are still in the same lane of offending you, are still in the same lane of hating you. No, forgive them. Be on this side of the road. Let them be on the other side of the road until there is a repentance, until there is a change of heart. If a snake has not changed its way, if you, um, may I forgive, you bring the snake closer to you, you start giving it mice, <laughs> you start giving it mice or rats, the snake will grow big and it will bite you again. That's where many Christians, we are Christians, you know, we have to reconcile with people. We have been given a minister of reconciliation. We have to embrace them. God says through Amos, how can two walk together unless they are in agreement? How can two walk together unless they are in agreement? See, Joseph brings his brothers closer to him. Already Joseph has mastered forgiveness. He did not go back to Potiphar's wife. He did not go back to the butler or to the baker. He has already forgiven his brother. 
but he has tried and tested them to find out if they have changed. Many people die. Wife goes back to an ex-husband who went around, slept around, did everything, then you die of HIV. Well, the Bible says God has divorced. Has he changed his ways? Has he changed his ways? That person has not changed his way. Ah, sisters have been believing God for restoration. Now restoration has come. Oh, glory to God. Shandarava, shandarava. You, you die. Glory to God. Is that what God is saying? The ways have not changed. Here, his brothers, his, he, Joseph saw their ways had changed. Glory to God. That's why he brought them closer to him. See, let's not be fools, my brothers and sisters. Let's be wise. Be wise in Jesus' mighty name. Glory. Hallelujah. If you have questions about this, we will go deeper in private. When they had done so, he said, then Joseph said to his brother, brothers, come close to me. When they had done so, he said, I am your brother, Joseph, the one you sold into Egypt. And now, listen to Joseph. This is forgiveness. Do not be distressed. Do not be angry with yourselves. What is he telling them? He is releasing them. Do not be angry with what you did. When you forgive people, don't be counting it again as, you know, last year you did this. Last of last year you did this. No, this is, it's a trend. Now. It's a trend. It's, it's now fashion. You know, that's not forgiveness. You have not forgiven them. No. You, you know, he, he says, listen, listen to me. This is what Joseph is, is, is saying. Do not be distressed and do not be angry. He is releasing the negative emotions that are in their heart. Why is he doing so? Because God wants them to be blessed. He wants his brothers to be blessed. God wants everybody to be blessed. Glory to God. See, now, let's go back. Jim, Jim, Jim. Go back to the tape. What I was talking about, reconciliation. See, what you do is this. You make up your mind to forgive people, even if they have not repented. That's what you do. You make up your mind. You walk in forgiveness. Glory to God. That the day when they repent, they come. You are ready. That's what God was doing in Joseph's life. He was teaching him, training him. Glory to God. Taking away bitterness. Taking away resentment. Taking away revenge. There are men that are here. They are praying. Hey, Father, bless me with a child so that my wicked mother-in-law can see. Bless me with a marriage so that that sister at the church can see that I'm a prayer warrior. You know, there are many people praying dangerous prayers. There are some even at work. This manager will see. My God, they will see my God. I'm telling you, they will see fire from heaven. That is not it. That is not promotion. See, forgiveness is a, it's a heart issue. It's something that as Christians, let me help you out. It's already on the inside of us. Forgiveness is Christ. In him, there is forgiveness of sin. Ephesians 1, 7. In him, we have redemption. We have forgiveness. In Christ, are we not in Christ? We are in him, right? So it's something that is inside of us. But we have to begin to exercise. Even somebody that has hurt you, you want to exercise Father in the name of Jesus. How? By blessing them. Begin to declare. In your prison right now of pain, of a hurt, whether that person is your son, your daughter, your, a close relative, you learn to bless them. Father, I bless them. In the name of Jesus, I pray for them, Father, that they will come to light. Remember what did Jesus say? They know not what they are doing. They know not what they are doing. They know not what they are doing. Why? Because they are in darkness. So you, who is light, start speaking light. Start speaking forgiveness to them. Don't, ah, you don't understand what they have done. You will stay where you are. Glory to God. This is a hard message, but it has to be preached. You, you won't see the manifestation. And before long, that will also affect your children and your children's children. Because you have opened the portal for the enemy. That's why Jesus said, say to this sicker mind tree, say to this sicker mind tree, be uprooted. Because if you don't say it to the sicker mind tree, trees produces branches. Your children are the branches. And then the fruit, that is what you get at the end of it. That's why we have to forgive. All right. Let's go deeper with Joseph. <laughs> Glory to God. And now, do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourself for selling, for selling me here because it was to save lives. And God sent me ahead of you. It was to save lives. Sometimes what we go through, it's going to be a testimony. Right? When Jesus was named at the cross, did they see the resurrection. They were mocking him. They were saying stuff against him. Sometimes your in-laws will say stuff against you. Sometimes people will say stuff 
again as you sometimes <laughs> sometimes it's not people mm -mm, sometimes it's you glory to god i mean i forgive i forgive yeah maybe it is you maybe it is your attitude that is attracting people to act the way they act to be hostile towards you see these are the things that when we start in mark 11 22 have faith in god when you have faith in god you will know if it is you you married the guy you married the gay your auntie told you not to <laughs> your mother told you not to do it your father told you not to now he is panel beating you or now she is chopping you up like tomatoes now you you know i cannot forgive oh i have to forgive no the first thing you repent father I should not have been in this relationship. Father, I should not have been in this job. Father, I should not have been in this city. Now things are bad to me. Lord, it is not the manager. No, Father, you, you, people want me about this, but I was up on anyone. You can't be exercising forgiveness, yet you are in the wrong place. Hey, this will preach. <laughs> Glory to God. See? Because he says, I mean, I forgive. I forgive, I forgive everybody. Yet you brought it to yourself. Joseph did not bring it to himself says, you sold me here, you sold me here, you sold me here. God saw that there was going to be a famine, right, in the land. God saw it. So he sent me ahead. He sent me ahead. He sent me ahead. Glory to God. He sent me ahead. He sent me ahead. He used you. He used your offenses. He sent me ahead. The cross, that was God sending Jesus ahead. So that will also be resurrected. God sent Jesus ahead. Glory to God. The offenses that you face, God is sending you ahead so that you can help others that are offended. In the same way, last but not least, the person who forgives is in the place of God. Right? The person who forgives is in the place of God. The person who forgives is in the place of God because God always forgives. He forg Think of uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. If I find 50 righteous people, I will spare it. Think of... Uh, Nineveh, right? When Jonah went to Tashish, he preached in Nineveh. God forgave them. <laughs> that is God. That's his nature. So when you start exercising forgiveness, you start forgiving people. You are acting in the place of God. Genesis 50, right? Because I know sometimes we get religious. How can you be in the place of God? Let's read. I'm reading from the NIV. Genesis 50 from verse 15. Right? We'll round up here. When Joseph's brother saw that their father was dead, Right? When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, What if Joseph holds a grudge against us and pays us back for all the wrongs we did to him? You see, they had not yet forgotten what they had done to Joseph. Now the father is dead. They said, I thought that's the enemy. They start thinking, Oh, this man is going to attack us. Because what Joseph did, very few people can do it. Right? You want revenge. Most Christians want revenge. You want you are praying, you are praying fire. You are Elijah. Fire. <laughs> Glory. That's not Christianity. Glory to God. It is love. You lay down your life. People will offend you. You will also <laughs> offend people. Right? So we need to rise up in Jesus' mighty name. We need to grow as God's children. Now, when Joseph's brother saw that their father was dead, they said, What if Joseph holds a grudge against us and pays us back for all the wrongs we did to him? So they, so they sent word to Joseph saying, your father left these instructions before he died. Now they are lying. This is what you are to say to Joseph. I ask you to forgive your brothers the sins and the wrongs they committed in treating you so bad. Now, please forgive the sins of the servants of the God of your father. <laughs> when their message came to him, Joseph wept. Joseph wept. Do you know why he wept? Because they did not understand his heart. They did not understand how genuine he is. We ought to be genuine when we forgive people. He wept. It troubled him. That do you think I'm evil? Do you think I'm going to repay evil with evil? That's where many people are. We repay people with evil. They will see who's who. Glory to No one can do this to me. <laughs> I want to turn when I'm sleeping. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, no. That's not Christianity. We need to grow up. Tell your neighbor, you need to grow up. He, he wept. His brothers then came and threw themselves down, verse 18, before him. We are your slaves. They threw themselves. You know, if it was some of us, <laughs> you know, you feel good now. <laughs> now they see, they recognize. That's how the people of the world are like. Christians should not be like this. No. You should not rejoice 
even whether it's a husband that left you now, he's suffering, whether it's a wife that left you, now she is suffering. You should not rejoice when people have calamity in their lives. That is not true Christianity. Mm -mm. That is not true Christianity. True Christianity, you should always be in that city. Do you know when you begin to pray for somebody that has hurt you, God stands up in heaven. Stephen, when they were stoning, he says, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. Guess what? Stephen saw, saw Jesus. Jesus stood up in heaven. Jesus had never stood up before, right? The Bible says Jesus is seated on the right hand of the Father. But when Stephen was being stoned, he says, I see the Son of God standing up. When you learn to forgive people that are hating you, that are causing you pain, Jesus stands up because you are acting like Jesus, right? You are acting like Jesus, right? You are acting like Jesus, right? We are your slaves, they say. But Joseph said to them, don't be afraid. Again, he reassures them. He reassures them. Don't be afraid. I am in the place of God. I am in the place of God. There you go. A person who forgives is in the place of God. Right? So when you hold on grudges and bitterness and unforgiveness, whose place are you in? <laughs> Should I give it, make it a hard message? Place of God, place of the devil. Unforgiveness is of the devil because unforgiveness is death. Unforgiveness is bitterness. Unforgiveness destroys. It will destroy you. Glory to God. Unforgiveness is like, it's like, it's like you drinking poison and expecting somebody to die. It's, it won't work. Glory to God. You are killing yourself. I'm in the place of God. Let's round up. You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. Glory to God. You intended it for evil, but God meant it for good to accomplish what is now being done. You intended it for evil, but God meant it for good. What was that good? Saving lives, saving lives in Jesus' mighty name. We have a breakthrough tonight in the area of forgiveness in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory to God. So wherever you are, Maybe you're holding grudges against somebody else. Let go and let go. Glory to God. And pray again. Maybe you are the one causing offenses, right? Maybe you, you are causing people offenses. Pray that Lord open my eyes. Maybe you are nailing people to the cross. <laughs> Glory to God. Because it's easy to be the victim, not be the one that are causing others to be victims, right? So when we are preaching this message, we need to hear it from both angles. Maybe I'm Joseph's brother <laughs> that has sold Joseph, right? Maybe I'm the one that has attacked my in-laws. Maybe I'm the one that has attacked my sister. Maybe I'm the one that has attacked my brother and I don't see it. I see her as the problem. I see him as the problem. I see her as the problem. I see them as the problem. Yet maybe I might be the problem. Right? So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you because you are a good, good God. You are a great God. You are an amazing God. Lord, as you are teaching us on forgiveness, reconciliation, to understand what it is, Lord, I pray that, Father God, what I might have missed, Lord, the Holy Spirit is the greatest teacher. And, Lord, all the questions that might come my way, thank you for the wisdom to even answer them in the mighty name of Jesus. You have called us, Father God, to save lives. Yes, through forgiveness, we will save lives. So I come against the spirit of bitterness that has destroyed your children in Jesus' mighty name. I pray, Father God, that, Lord, as you say, faith is small as a mustard seed. We can speak to the seeker mind tree. So we are speaking to seeker mind trees today. We are saying seeker mind trees be uprooted and be planted into the ocean in our families. Father, we are praying for that unity of faith in the name of Jesus. And those that are doing evil towards us or against us. Father, we are praying for them that God bless them, Lord. They know not what they are doing. Open their eyes in the mighty name of Jesus. Let them come to the revelation of true life. Now this is the time to pray for people that have hurt you in the mighty name of Jesus. People that have caused you pain. Now it's time to just begin to declare wherever you are, just release them. These can be your in-laws. These can be ex 
husband. This can be work colleagues. This can be people at the church. Kaya lambros kele braka hai. Dos ke stera babu sakatara baka handa. Likoms kele braka hai. And it's time to say, Holy Spirit, have your way in my heart. In the mighty name of Jesus, likoms kele braka hai. Teach me, guide me, Spirit of the the living God, that I can be offense proof. In the mighty name of Jesus, that I can be a blessing wherever I go. In Jesus. Mighty name, glory to God, glory to God. May the Lord bless you, may the Lord strengthen you. <laughs> Till we meet again, it's been awesome. Walk in forgiveness, forgive those that attack you. Glory to God, in the mighty name of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah, praise the name of Jesus. Amen and amen.